China signals buckle up. Already being rocked by COVID lockdowns, lackluster data coming out of the Chinese real estate sector shows a further weakening of the Chinese economy. China remains firm in its zero tolerance policy for COVID, and it's leading to dozens of lockdowns in cities across China. Sagging indicators, economic statistics released, which include retail sales, industrial output, and fixed asset investment have all slowed. And the economic data missed economists' estimate by wide margins in the July 2022 data release. This represents the weakest expansion of economic activity in China since the initial first quarter coronavirus outbreak in 2020. This is the chart you're looking at as the China economic indicators. The TikTok employment market is very weak. In China, the government tracks a unique data point, the unemployment rate for individuals aged 16 to 24. This Gen Z demographic are working harder on their smartphones these days as unemployment for them just surged to a record high of just under 20% unemployed in China. That's the chart you're looking at right now. Taking a more broad brush approach using survey data from 31 Chinese cities, the overall unemployment rate across all demographics is 5.6%. It might feel low, especially if you're comparing it to the European standards, but this is well above the historical national average. In private, politicians are worried. The Chinese leadership brass acknowledged the country's annual GDP growth target of 5.5% is no longer achievable. Mainstream economists are forecasting 4% GDP growth or lower for this year, 2022. China has never missed its GDP target by such a large magnitude before. The government of China only missed its GDP target once in 1998 by 0.2%. A miss of this nature represents a major black eye for the CCP. To curb the economic slide, the People's Bank of China, also known as the Chinese Central Bank, unexpectedly cut interest rates this week. This goes against the grain of every other nation who has seen their central banks raise interest rates considerably over the past three months, including the US Federal Reserve. That's the data you're looking at right now. Chinese credit growth shows that the monetary policy is pushing on a string. Last Friday's data, showed aggregate financing, a broad measure of credit, was almost half of what the economists expected, and bank loan growth slowed to 11%, near the historical low. You can see that at the chart right now. It shows the 12-month moving average for lending to non-financial corporations and households. Both averages have been trending down hard for months. You can always question the reliability of data and it's only one data set. But for what it's worth, using the July data financing and loan issuances, they are down a lot. Here's the summary of the financial destruction. In July 2022, the new aggregate social financing came in at just 756 billion won. That's declining 5.1 trillion won from just a month earlier. And that's representing a 85% month over month decrease. Remember, it was 756 billion won versus 5.1 trillion. The new won denominated loan slowed to 679 billion from June's 2.8 trillion. That also is a decrease of 76% month over month change. Corporations issued 86 billion won in bonds down from 2.4 trillion won in June. That represents a 96% decrease month over month. Bank lending to households came in at 122 billion won, down from 852 billion won in June. Again, an 86% decrease month over month change. Negative Nancy, reshoring China is just one concern. China Inc.'s retreat from US capital markets is accelerating. Five of China's largest state-owned companies, including China Life Insurance and PetroChina, announced plans to delist from the U.S. publicly listed exchange. This comes after U.S.-China relations sank to new lows following House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. The barrage of trading halts comes at a bad time for the city's equity market, 
after the Hang Seng Index slid to a 10-year low last month. Trading in 33 Hong Kong listed stocks worth a combined 15 billion were all halted after last week after the firms missed the deadline to report annual results. Troubled Chinese developers, including Sunak China Holdings and Shimao Group Holdings, were among the stocks suspended. The high yield bond market continues its free fall with an estimated 125 billion US dollars in losses year to date. Average junk bonds are trading at 56 cents on the dollar in China. As you can see, there's almost no end to the negative data. But wait, there's more. Fire sales in Chinese real estate. The housing slump worsened in July, with sales falling more than 28% on year-over-year -year prices, declining from 11 consecutive months. It's been declining for 11 months in a row. This is the worst streak for Chinese real estate since 2014. That's the chart you're looking at right now. The $90 billion wipeout. On the heels of price softening, the Chinese real estate developer index continues to plumb levels unseen since 2012. As I discussed in last week's mix with the link right here, the Chinese developers are really hurting with many facing major credit crunches later this year. The median dollar bond price for a Chinese real estate firm was 16 cents on the dollar versus 40 cents on the dollar in March of 2022. That's nearly 80% of real estate debt is trading below 50 cents on the dollar. At least 90 billion has been wiped out in China's real estate stocks and dollar bonds this year, and a bursting housing bubble and intensifying debt crisis threaten to inflict even more pain. But how does this affect commodities? In China, the economic pain can be seen across sectors with crude steel output dropping around 6% year on year since last month. Iron ore demand continues to trend lower and looks to be trending lower since the COVID stimulus spike in late 2020. And this leads me to the potential of the Chinese currency devaluation on the horizon. The People's Bank of China will do everything in its power to orchestrate a soft economic landing. An expansive monetary policy coupled with soft or declining economic growth typically would be faced with a depreciating currency. However, because the yuan is pegged to the US dollar, this math goes out the window. The big issue for China altering its peg is that buying commodities in the international market becomes more expensive. Why? Well, each yuan buys less commodities under a devaluation scenario. It's that simple. Now, is a devaluation scenario possible? Nothing should be ruled out. But it's not my base case scenario. Macroeconomic risk is something that few investors truly understand or account for in their portfolio construction. I've outlined my entire game plan in real time to my subscribers, including an example of how devaluation works. If you want to see my premium research, consider becoming a subscriber to Katusa's resource opportunities. It's a bold strategy that some may not agree with, but just remember, fortune favors the bold. Stay safe. Subscribe to the KRO, which is a Katusa resource opportunities to find out exactly what prices I'm buying at and what price I sell at before the trade occurs. And you get to sell before I do. If you want to give your portfolio an edge, consider becoming a member and giving it a try for yourself.